Hi there and welcome back to another NJS instructional video. In this video, I'm going to clarify the torque and power split in open and locked differentials for both part-time and full-time four-wheel drive vehicles. Now you may or may not have seen my video on how four-wheel drive systems work. In that video, I incorrectly mentioned that torque is distributed in an open differential based on wheel resistance or slip. For example, I mentioned that torque is split 50-50% to each axle in an ideal situation. However, if a wheel is in the air, then 100% torque is sent to this wheel and 0% torque to the other wheel, which has traction. However, this is actually not correct. To clarify this, let's first look at a part-time four-wheel drive vehicle in two high and then four high and four low a little bit later. For purposes of this video, we will ignore any torque and power losses in the drivetrain. An open differential will always split torque evenly, 50-50% to each axle, regardless of wheel resistance. But why is it then, when a wheel is in the air, this wheel seems to receive all of the drive and the other wheel doesn't spin at all? What is actually happening in this situation? The answer is actually power, or less technically drive, is actually being split in an open differential and not torque. Therefore, an open differential will always vary power, not torque, based on wheel resistance. Power will always go to the wheel with least resistance or the wheel that spins faster. Now power is simply the function of torque and angular velocity or RPM. In metric units, power in kilowatts is equal to torque in newton meters multiplied by RPM and then divided by 9549. As an example, if torque is 450 newton meters, RPM is 800, then the power is 37.7 kilowatts. Because of this, if the wheel with greater resistance is not spinning, then its angular velocity or RPM is actually zero. Therefore, multiplying zero by any amount of torque will still equate to zero power, and therefore no power is actually being transmitted to this stationary wheel. When a vehicle is turning to the right, the outer wheel spins faster than the inside wheel. For illustration purposes, let's say the outer rear wheel rotates at 1300 RPM and the inside rear wheel at 900 RPM. Then the power split is actually 59% outer wheel to 41% inner wheel. However, torque split remains the same on each axle at 50-50%. Another example is when a wheel lifts in the air and the other wheel isn't spinning at all. Both wheels still receive 50% of the torque, but the power is distributed at 100% wheel spinning in the air and 0% wheel stationary on the ground. Now with a lock differential, the axles are locked together, so they rotate at the same speed or RPM. A lock differential therefore allows for an uneven or varied torque split between the axles. This is different to an open differential, which will always split torque equally 50-50% to each axle. This means a lock differential can actually distribute up to 100% of the torque to either wheel. And this allows for maximum torque and power to be transmitted at any time to either wheel depending on surface conditions and where the torque is actually needed. This could mean the difference between moving or getting stuck in low traction surfaces. However, because a lock differential locks the axles and therefore speed of each wheel together, it no longer acts as a differential and it shouldn't be used in high traction surfaces as it doesn't allow for differences in left-right wheel speed. Now let's take a closer look at a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. When the centre differential is open, the torque is now split 50-50% equally between front and rear drive shafts and consequently front and rear differentials. Since both the front and rear differentials only receive 50% torque, this leaves 25% torque split to each axle when the differentials are opened. If all the wheels are subject to the same surface conditions, then all wheels will receive the same amount of power. However, if now one wheel is in the air, then all of the available power is sent to this wheel, essentially giving you one wheel drive. By locking the centre differential in a full-time four-wheel drive, or engaging four high or four low in a part-time four-wheel drive, this will allow the torque to be varied between front and rear drive shafts, and consequently differentials, depending on where it is needed. 
However, because we have open front and rear differentials, we still have an even torque split across the front and rear differentials. For example, if the vehicle is in a diagonal situation and the front right and rear left wheels are in the air, all the power will be sent to these wheels. So in this situation, we still have only two wheel drive. Therefore, by locking the center and rear differentials, the torque can be varied depending on where it is needed. For example, up to 100% of available torque could be sent to the front or rear drive shafts if needed. More realistically, say the vehicle is climbing up a hill and there is more power and torque required on the rear differential, you may have 60% of available torque sent to the rear differential, which could be split 35% to the rear left wheel and 25% to the rear right wheel. The remaining 40% torque could be sent to the front differential. However, as the front differential is still open, it will equally split this torque to each wheel, so 20% to each wheel. Now, as the vehicle is moving, the power and torque split is continually changing to adjust the surface conditions. In a worst case situation, you still could have 100% of the torque distributed to the front differential and then split to only one wheel. However, I can't think of a situation where this would occur in the real world. Now, by locking all three differentials, we can now have a true torque and power split. Torque and power can be distributed to the wheel with the greatest amount of resistance and hence where it is required the most. For example, in a diagonal situation where two opposing wheels are in the air, this is no longer a problem as the axles are all locked and torque can be sent to where it is actually needed. So the vehicle will continue to put power down provided the surface conditions allow for it. When comparing this same scenario, however, with the front and rear differentials now open, it becomes apparent that power is sent to the wheels with least resistance, quite the opposite effect. Another example is again a vehicle climbing a hill. Say 65% of the torque is sent to the rear differential, which then splits at 20% rear left wheel and 45% rear right wheel. 35% of the torque is also sent to the front differential, which could split at 25% front left wheel and 10% front right wheel. Again, this depends on the surface conditions and how much power can actually be put down. Now these values are just for indication purposes, but are just an example of what could happen in the real world. Remember, a full-time four-wheel drive with the center differential locked acts the same way as a part-time four-wheel drive in either four-high or four-low in terms of torque and power split. A vehicle in four-low will also have torque multiplication due to lower gearing used in the transfer case. However, the principles of torque and power split still remain the same. Therefore, a triple-locked full-time four-wheel drive or a twin-locked part-time four-wheel drive will give you true four-wheel drive in terms of torque and power transmission, even in non-ideal conditions. So I hope this clarifies how an open and locked differential distribute both power and torque in a four-wheel drive vehicle. I hope you found this video informative. Don't forget to like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit that bell notification icon. Thanks for watching.